All right, Shalom, Barak Dayahawa, Barak Dayahawa Shah, Barak Dayahawa, Barak Dayahawa Shah, Kohala Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shah, Bashim Rakak Wadash. All right, um, double honesty, apostles of great millstone and salutation to you brothers that's pushing the word in sincerity and truth. All right, so this is another episode of History and the Law. Um, well, you know, we go into the to the history of the scriptures. All right, so today's um topic, we're going to go into um basically uh going into the next chapter because we did uh Judges the second chapter. So this is Judges the third chapter and um we're going to go into um a judge that the Lord raised up who was a Benjaminite. Right, his name was Ehud. All right, and if you want to um go into his Hebrew name is Ahawa Ahawa Ah, Shalakia, Ahawad. All right, and it, um, it means um, I will give thanks, I will be praised. All right, and that was his name. And uh, you know, in his acts that we read, his act was a, a a very courageous act, and it was the Lord that rose him up to do it. All right, so start with um. I'm going to read a little bit into the third chapter, then I'm going to shoot straight to the point. It's in about the 11th verse, uh, maybe about the, no, about the 12th verse, 11th, 12th verse. All right, this is uh, Judges 3, uh, and I'm going to start at 1. It says, now these are the nations with the, lo the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. So that's the scripture to prove that our people, uh, um, the tribes of Israel continuously fought against uh, the Canaanites, which would be those other dark-skinned nations. All right, now you could go into the Bible dictionary and um, look up who the Canaanites are. All right, those were um, the sons of Ham. All right, and it says only that generation of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the, unto the entering end of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites. Hittites and Amorites and Perizzites and Hivites and Jebusites. So the children of Israel dwelt amongst their enemies. All right. So they were putting that land around the children of Israel to prove the children of Israel that look, if you gonna if you gonna um, serve the Lord, look, I'm I'm gonna deliver you from your enemies. You're gonna win wars against your enemies. All right. Remember what Moses said. Let's go to um real quick quickly. Why I'm just thinking about it. Remember what Moses said in uh, Deuteronomy, the first chapter, in the 30th verse. This is what Moses said. It said, The Lord your power, his name is Yahweh, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. So that that's why the Lord put them in the position that they were in, you know, because... You know, you if you in the midst of your enemies, and you know you, peace coming from the Lord, you know um, destruction coming from the Lord. All right, and remember in the previous chapter, the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord, um, the Lord made us serve our enemies. You know, all right. Oh, well, the Lord said, the Lord said, hold on. In verse, um, Shalaki. I mean, in, in verse 14, it said the Lord raised up spoilers. All right. All right. So um, I'm jumping down in the book of uh, Judges 3 to verse um, 12. And it says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. And they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. So the children of Israel once again the evil in the sight of the Lord, and he raised up the king Eglon, which goes back to the Hebrew word Agalawam, Agalawan, uh, which means uh, well, he was the king of the Moabites. And um, when you look up the uh, uh, definition, it says calf like, you know, he, calf, he calf like a uh, 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 young bull, okay? So, you know, 
that was that was what his name meant calf like all right and it said um verse uh 13 and it says and he gathered unto him the children of ammon and amalek and went and smote israel and possessed the city of palm trees so he got with uh a co scriptures talk about on um, the confederacy or when you go to in the psalms 83 all right well they got together the ammonites uh along with the king of moab along with um um yeah the king of moab and they took down the children of israel all right they took down the children of Israel. Because, and why why did they take down the children of Israel? Because the Lord wasn't dealing with them because they was going off once again, serving other gods. So every time Israel went off and served other gods and did evil in the sight of the Lord, the Lord rose up a, a, a king. Um, let me see. Uh, another... Real quick, if I can find this. Yeah. Yeah, this is um the book of Psalm 75. And uh, 6. It says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But the Most High is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. All right, so... When you read in this chapter, uh, the book of Judges, you'll find that before the, the Lord rose up a king um, of Mesopotamia and he took down the uh, nation of Israel and they were in captivity for a number of years. And then after that, the, the Most High took him down, raised up another, which was the King Eglon, which was his definition of his name is Catholic. All right. And that's how the Heavenly Father gets down. That's why we know that the Lord is is is. The Lord has the power that he's going to take down the Edomites in these days because he raises up one and he taketh down another. And we're seeing examples of that in the book of Judges. So this is uh, Psalm 75 and uh, 7. It says, The Most High is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup and the wine is red. It is full of, the f of, of mixture and he poureth out of the same but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Okay? And you know that goes into Esau, but the, the a characteristic of the Lord is the Lord raiseth up kings and he taketh them down. And just like he took Eglon down and we're going to get into it. The king of the Moabites, which the Moabites today will be the so-called Chinese. The Ammonites will be the so-called Japanese today. And the Amalekites or Amalek will be the so-called Jew. So that's what happened in in the, in the um in the ancient days the, of the uh, Amalekites, uh, the Ammonites, and the Moabites came up against the nation of Israel, and took the um it says it Shalagi it says um it said uh, it, and possessed the city of trees it says smote Israel and possessed the city of trees all right so they smote Israel they put a, a lot of our people to death all right. Verse 14, it says, So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. All right, so what happened to the nation of Israel after they was in slavery, they were serving the king of Moab. They ended up crying unto the Lord, and the Lord raised up. Who did he raise up? He raised up a judge. All right, he raised up a deliverer. All right, just like the same, same concept. Now you got the men of the Lord out on the highways and hedges because they know that they're in captivity. They're praying to the Lord and the Lord is going to raise up a deliverer. All right. And in these times, the deliverer is Yahweh Shah. Back in the ancient days, one deliverer, his name was Ehud or, or ah, Ahawad. Ahawad. All right. All right. So it says Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjaminite, a Benjamite. A man, a, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent present, sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit's length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. So this king who was Catholic, 
he was a very fat man, okay? Alright, and it says, um, so they, they, they brought a president to him, you know? He was a setup, basically. Alright, uh, 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 the, what is Jacob? Um, Yaquah to supplant. So, going back to uh, Jacob, supplanted, you know, this Moabite king, all right, to, to, to basically put him, put him to death. We're going to read it. It says, And when he had made an end of offering present, offering the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarter, um, from the quarries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor, parlor which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from, Yah, from the Most High unto thee. He said, I have a message unto the Most High, Yahweh, unto thee. Then he arose out of his seat, and Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. So you got to keep in mind that you have this deliverer whose name was Ehud came unto the king of the Moabite, the Moabites, and said to the king, I have a message unto you. Unto you. This king was anticipating the message, but it wasn't the message that he was he he expected. Okay, you gotta know the glory of the God of Israel. This is the same God that 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 took down the uh, the Egyptians, raised up the Egyptian. They had those they, they had those inf that information. So here it is, the deliverer Ehud coming to the king of of, of the Moabite and telling him, "I have a message for you." But the actual message was, we're gonna read what that message was. <laughs> We're going to show you what the message that he had for him. All right. It says, Then Ehud went forth. Um, Shalakia. It said, And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the half also went after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly and the dirt came out. So his blood was just gushing out and the dude was just fat, man. He was just fat. <clears throat> he was basically a cat calf a calf for the slaughter, man. Alright? A sacrifice, man. <laughs> it says it says in um verse twenty three, it says, Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked him. When he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he covered his feet in his summer chamber. Then they tarried till they were ashamed, and behold, he opened not the door of the parlor. Therefore they took a key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud escaped while they tarried, and passed beyond the quarries, and escaped unto uh, Sir Sirath. All right, so Ehud got up out of there, man. He put the king to death, and he got up out of there, man. That was a that was a secret mission that the Lord sent him on, man. And he actually re received the message from the Lord, which was death. He probably leaned over and was anticipating something, you know, a blessing from from the God of Israel. All right, you know, but he ended up getting <laughs> he getting getting put to death, man. All right, and this is a king of a nation. All right, and he uh, so Ehud escapes, verse twenty-seven, and it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. So after that happened, they blew the trumpet. All right, so what's the significance of the trumpet? All right, we'll get the, the significance of the trumpet real quick. This is the the book of Numbers ten and nine. <clears throat> Numbers 10 and 9. We got a few more minutes. 
All right, this is the book of Numbers 10 and 9. It says, um, it says, And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, was not the Moabites oppressive, oppressing Israel? It says, Then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your power, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So after that, they, they blew the trumpet. And they were remembered of the Lord by the act of what Ehud did. All right. And and and, and the Lord, the Lord delivered us from our enemies, man. All right. And and this was all orchestrated by the Spirit of the Heavenly Father, man. All right. Going back into uh, we're gonna finish it out real quick. It says, and it came to pass when he was come. That he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord have delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into, into your hands, into your hand. And they went down after him, and took the fords of Jordan towards Moab, and suffered not a man to pass over. Then they slew of Moab. That time about 10,000 men, all lusty, and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So it was a complete slaughter of the Moabites, all right? The so-called Chinese in that day. All right, so how can these nations uh, 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 exalt themselves above the power of the Heavenly Father when the Lord destroyed them in their, in, in their, um, in their ancient days, man? All right? It says, then after him, was Sh uh, Sham Shamgar the son of Enah? Okay, so I mean, basically, that I mean that that goes into it. Basically, uh, multiple uh, Moabites were slain, and it was the Lord that did it. And 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 what, I'm gonna read this last one. It says, it says, and he said unto them, Follow after me, verse 28. Follow after me, for the Lord have delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hands. So he said, the Lord have delivered the, the, uh, your enemies, the Moabites, into your hands. So after the nations, the Moab oppressed us for 18 years, there was a great slaughter of the Moabites, man. All right, so that, and, and coming into these times right now, we believe that our oppressors that oppressed us, the same thing is going to happen, all right, to, to our enemies. And this was a, the, the, the um, Ehud basically went on a secret mission of the Lord and set up a way that um, the uh, the Moabites would be slaughtered, man. All right, by first taking out the king and then blowing that trumpet and then we were remembered of the Lord, man. So with that, we, I give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushua, double honesty, apostles of great millstone and salutations to you brothers that's pushing the work in sincerity and truth. Until next episode, Shalom.